Ladies and gentlemen, K Kim here. Uh, welcome to the market update. Um, today is Friday. Market has been closed a couple hours ago. Hope you guys had a good week trading this week. Uh, looking forward to the weekend to rejuvenate and to um, relax and recoup for the next week's uh, trading sessions. Um, I think at this point, most people are wondering, uh, well, S&P 500 has been holding up. So um, are we going to continue to go higher or would that be some kind of shenanigan, right? Um, I think when you just when you just kind of cut out all the noise you may be hearing uh, on the news, maybe what CNBC is saying. I don't know the last time I was listening to CNBC, so I do not know what they're saying. Sometimes, you know, people send me stuff on Twitter, but I don't, I don't know. I care less. I think yesterday somebody sent me that, um, what's his face? Kramer was saying that the market was going to see a downturn or something like that. Um, I think that's positive. I start to get nervous when CNBC starts saying uh, the market is poised to go higher or you know what I mean? Like, well, the market, the bull market is here or buy everything. But as long as they continue to push out and continue to inflict and impute fear to the public, I think the market is going to continue to move, move higher and just, I bet you can go back and check every headlines. Uh, since March lows and how market is up about 50% there on spider since the lows to where we're at today so anyhow uh, tonight we're going to look at spider diamond Russell Nasdaq Apple Netflix Amazon Goldman Sachs gold and Bitcoin and it is all coming up right now. <laughs> So looking at the spider here, uh, we're back at this level. We were trading in back in early June. We're gonna talk about that. Before we get into it, let's look at that um, you know hourly chart, 65 minute chart, and just do a little quick um, update from what we've been talking about yesterday. So yesterday, pretty much, um, you know, this is where we closed yesterday. Uh, we did see first hour gap up right at the get go. And we talked about the gap up yesterday, and we talked about how the gap has to be above the gap area. You guys, if you guys remember what I talked about yesterday, right? So this was this was where we closed uh, two days ago, and yesterday morning, this is where we opened. So there was a gap here, and then the market closed right here at about what three twenty eighty, right? And I talked about that we need buyer. The best case scenario for the buyers is to gap up above 322. What it did was we actually just gapped up right at the gap area. That's actually better than nothing. It's better than nothing because there was that at least early push. That was that early buying pressure. So that was the resistance though, and we talked about it also yesterday. If we just if the buyers just go up and fill it, we will see a pullback, right? So buyers actually did gap up, but was not able to gap over it. So we just kind of hit that fence, right? In the micro term, and we pulled back. That gap initially got filled. Because remember, this is where it opened. That's uh, no, this is where it was closed. Yesterday, yesterday, last hour. And then this is um, where it opened this morning. We pull back, fill the gap, overshot it, but bulls came up. Cause I think at that point, we kind of got a little bit of a, you know, micro term momentum there. Not to mention, you see my short term moving average continues to rise higher, right? And then that was the what? That was the uh, third hour, or well, second hour, 
So we came in on the second hour, we saw that bullish piercing candle. And then we got the third hour, fourth hour. Finally, we did thrust above the first hours of candle right here. And then that was the last hour kind of pulling back a little bit, right? So pretty much, you know, we've been doing this uh, entire week. And that doesn't mean nothing, right? It does not, not mean like we didn't do anything. There's meaning behind it, right? And we've been talking about how if you let buyers hang around long enough, they're gonna find their momentum. They're gonna they're gonna prepare for the next leg run here, especially for the fact that, you know, buyers got some momentum going on here, right? At least short to midterm, right? We got this momentum in the short to midterm. You know, you let buyers kind of hang around. Um, they like to bring things up. And again, that's how uh, buyers like to operate. Bears don't like that. Bears like to just bring it down as fast as they can. You can see these times where they did that. So when you start to see a consolidation, um, and especially when the market is in an overall uptrend, right? That we're in, right? Short to midterm. You want to definitely give benefit of the doubt to the buyers, right? If I start to see the market is in a downtrend, right? I give benefit of the doubt to the bears. You guys remember in all throughout the June, in this price action, pretty much almost every single video, I want to give benefit of the doubt to the sellers. I want to give benefit of the doubt to the sellers. Things will get hectic. Things will get hectic, right? Well, we came out of that phase and now we're in an uptrend phase. Let's check out that oscillator here real quick here. So we got the, we got a little bit of a, um, support here on that oscillator and we got a little bit of resistance here um but we have more momentum on the support side right because i mean we've been building buyers been building this momentum since you know late june right so it's been getting close to a month there this downtrend resistance uh, been building for just about several days and we just crossed up today i actually think that we are near the highs, right? We're near the highs. Think about that. So we are near the highs, that resistance, and my oscillator just crossed up. Usually you see my oscillator getting into overbought level when the price hits the kind of a resistance level. And usually after that, you do see price coming down pretty hard. And something started kind of changing a little bit. And we've been talking about it this entire week. We've been seeing some discrepancies and, and some, you know, conflicting uh, information on my oscillator this throughout this week. And I thought it was very interesting. And it would have been I think what bears wanted to see, because now they were at this, in, this this level right here, and I think at this point, a lot of bears are also looking at this as potentially a double top. We don't know that if it's a double top until we see a pretty sharp rejection. But keep in mind, there are many times bears did try to bring it down on this resistance. Here, the first attempt, we did see very, very fast sell-off quickly in that vicinity and that was when my oscillator hit overbought and then bulls brought it brought it back up again and then we did see a little pullback and then bulls brought it back up again and we see a little bit of pullback and then we brought it back up again you see how bulls are trying trying and trying exhausting the bears but what i really want to talk about is this though we are near the highs we are at the resistance Again, think about where the resistance was when the price was at that important resistance of 3022, 322 overbought. That's exactly what the bears wanted to see, right? Let bulls be tired so bears can take advantage of the situation, bring it down hard. They actually needed to bring it down even harder than this though. What we saw just, you know, what was that? Um, 13 so just on monday right 
So on Monday, towards the end of the hour, we did see you know, some sharp pullback, but that wasn't enough because we didn't see the follow through on Tuesday. We're back at this level. Keep this in mind though, because back in on Monday, bulls were definitely tired, right? Because we're back at the resistance. But we're back at it at 3022, 322. Are the bulls tired at this point? No. Again, resistance, bulls tire. Resistance, bulls just getting started. Not only that, bulls already got their bullish momentum built since um, late June here. And you say, well, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Well, maybe not. I mean, ser seriously, may nothing. Maybe, maybe none of this means anything. You know, maybe it's foolish for us to even try to analyze a price action. If you put it like that, I mean, nothing means. Maybe nothing means anything. Maybe none of this doesn't exist. This is all. This is just all, just big scam, right? You know, how people say that. Like this, this whole thing is a whole thing. It's a scam. It's a Ponzi scheme. Anyway. Um, so you can see that right here, this was back in April, uh, May, price was at 277, and then in June, price was at, uh, price got to 20, 323, right? So from um, 270s, went to 320, that's about 17% move, pretty much, you know, in about a month or so, and it kind of got all started with, uh, you know, my oscillator building momentum here, right? We saw that a little bit of resistance and market continue to move higher and we had these touches here and it didn't break. This momentum didn't break until we saw pretty solid uh, bearish divergence at the overbought level. So maybe then we, we go back and say, well, do we have any kind of bearish divergence, right? We really don't have a bearish divergence. Bearish divergence means that's a significant high high. We can all agree with that. That high, that's high, and that's a significant high high higher high, right? Not only that, when this thing fell, that's an eight percent pullback in about several days, and this thing fell all the way, and we broke that trend. That was early June. We're building energy still. Bulls just crossed it up. And we're at the resistance here, and there's no known bearish divergence at this point. Right? So there you see, so the thing about it is, I think the important piece of information right now is we're back at that in, important resistance, and the oscillator just crossed up. So obviously there's a little resistance here, but this, uh, this support has been building up for about a month or so. Uh, next week, Monday, obviously I'll tweet things out and give you guys an update on this, but bulls want to break above it and utilize and maximize this from this run. We, and we but the thing about this though, when you build energy, a breakout will be powerful. Obviously, is there a chance where maybe bears can break it down? That's also possible also, yeah. That's also possible, but I've, Usually, I think it has a higher probability of breaking out to the upside. That's not just my opinion. From what I've been, I've been, I've been studying these, following these oscillators, man, for like seven, eight years. And normally, when you see a building energy, I think it's gonna at least go up and try to touch that one more time. The question is, are the bulls gonna fully utilize and maximize from that? And if they do, this will get up to three thirty-three. Let's go to um. Daily chart here real quick. So looking at the daily, um, much more bullish sentiment as far as the current trend is concerned. Yes, we're back at the resistance, but a lot has happened. Remember, bulls got up here after good amount of rest, right? Good amount of rest here. Usually how the double top works is when the stock or stock or index goes up, pulls back, and then goes right back up without any kind of consolidation. 
And usually that's when you see price fall back to the neckline and you have to reassess this. Because a lot of times you fall back to the neckline, either we break below it and then do something like this and then actually that double top materializes and we see fall further pull back to the downside or you know how the market is. You kind of hold that level, we consolidate a little bit and then we just get up, right? This time is a little bit different. See, this is, this is a good example right here. This right here, that got up, pull came down, right? So that's a good example of May. We saw that high right there, we pulled back. We actually got right back up, pulled right back down. That right there is a kind of a double top, but never materialized it. We never saw the, you know, here, let me. That's definitely, that's a textbook double top that never played out. That That's a textbook double top that never played out right here. See that right there? So what happened was that's the high. We pulled back and then bulls brought right back up and then got rejected, pulled back down. It slightly undercut the neckline and market loves to do that. You know why? Because so many people are looking at things way, way too closely back in mid-May. I remember a lot of people calling for double top. A lot of people are calling for a head and shoulder pattern. There are a lot of commotion and back in mid-May. I even did a video. You can go find that video, what I was saying. So it slowly, it, it, it precisely, like, you know what I mean? It broke below it just so it can create a little bit of panic and fear. Maybe even trap both shorts and longs because it's trapping, trapping shorts because shorts go short, add on to the shorts, longs, they get stopped out and that was a major, major bottom before this market did that. That's why you got to be very careful before you calling that double top, triple top, or head and shoulder formation. You need you need some full confirmation. And that's you see how that quickly that that from that failed breakdown just market went vertical. That's almost 20% move less than a month, right? And that was when my oscillator was building energy like this. But anyhow, this is a little bit different situation. Market pulled back. We didn't go all the way up. We stopped short in the middle of it. We pulled back. Instead, we built double bottom. And you see how this is. See, th think about this. This is a double top. This You just flip that and you get this. Do you see... Do you see this? That was the neckline. But what didn't happen was back in mid-May, we didn't come down and then start flipping, you know what I mean? Start hanging around at the lows like this. We didn't see something like that. We reversed higher. So here, market pulled back, got right back up, pulled back again. You can look at that maybe as a neckline here, right? If you just flip it, where where you don't see the price hanging around below it, but the price is hanging around above it, like that. So you see how that is. Did you see a lot of people freaking out? Right? I was calling there's a potentially double bottom here. Right? And this was a potential double bottom also. It has to go to, you have to be fair on both directions. Yeah, it, it was a, a potentially double top here, but potentially double bottom here. That's a potential double bottom. And both times double bottom played out. How do you know? Because it, the price advanced and broke above this resistance and then continued higher. And you remember how people are saying this is bearish? And it's despite the fact that we broke above the double top, people are still calling me was bearish, 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 bearish. And then this move was pretty painful for many of them. And so now, so you see, so now we're back here. This is the neckline of this double bottom. And it's been holding up ever since we're about up here. What does it tell us? Right? This is a double bottom, right? Double bottom. That's the neckline. 
right? That's the neckline. We're held holding up here. And then we saw that breakout. Again, in May, that's when we saw that oscillator building energy, right? As the market was getting ready to get, a, get into a third and fourth and fifth gear. And that's kind of what it's doing right here. That's just something like this and something like that. Let's go to the diamond real quick. I mean, it's it's a little bit different st uh, story here because we're not quite at the highs yet. The June highs on the diamond, right? Because obviously diamond's lagging here. But good, good news is that diamond, you know, finally got up and filled this island gap. And that's a good sign. And that's a good sign. But you can see that um, there's that support right here potentially double bottom or triple bottom or head and shoulder for me invert head and shoulder whatever it is that was a neckline right here 261 we're just pulling back to retest pulling back to retest potentially making a move that's a bullish setup and this is a bullish look right and this is what the charts tell me that this looks bullish not only that if we just you know move out and all the moving average is rising here all my long-term moving average is hanging out in this vicinity the moving average clusters and we've been consolidating that that's a nice consolidation right we got the rising uptrend support we got the uh you know my midterm moving average is continued to rise all right we want to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers let's go to small caps again small caps what is small caps doing very similar to what the Dow is doing, except that we got this big gap that was made. What was this? Um, Tuesday, right? So that was Tuesday, Wednesday. So that was a Wednesday gap up. So that's a Monday, that's Tuesday. We did see Wednesday, big run up on the small cap stocks and maybe Russell 2000 see a gap up here, right? Decent size gap up. And that gap held. That gap held, as you can see right here. We're holding above that gap. And when the stock is holding, when the index is holding up above the gap area, it's generally a bullish sign as far as a probability is concerned. And just look at this gap right here. Right there. Right? That was in May. See this gap up? And you see that gap up. And both times when the gap happened, we did see consolidation for a couple days. And here also, last couple days, we are seeing that consolidation. And again, when that gap was happening, the price was above all of my short and midterm moving average looking at the daily, right? That's a short-term moving average on my daily. That's a mid-term moving average on my daily. When the gap happened, the when the when the price was hanging around, like that floating around above the gap area, it was hanging around above the gap area and on above my moving average. Right now, my moving average is here. And so basically, same recipe, right? Price consolidated, kind of like May. And then um we see a gap up right here, here, and then you see a consolidation for several days, couple days, several days, right? And holding up, and then what happened afterwards? Price advanced, and I'm expecting price advancing maybe next week. We first need to see price breaking out, right, to the upside. We'll have to check that oscillator also on Spider. And obviously, we'll know more on Monday, which I'll tweet things out, you know, let you guys know what's going on. And if I see price advancement, if I see the oscillator making a move, breaking out, all of those information is going to help us navigate. Because the next leg run higher could be, um, you know, who knows? I mean, it could be, again, like in May, that's, that's you know, on the Russell 2000 in May, I think that was what, from the lows, well, that's a quite, a, that's a 30% run. S&P was about 17 so that's from the 117 to 153, right? 
from here to there, just less than a month. I don't know if we're going to see exactly like that, but, you know, I think there's a good chance it get up here at least to retest. Next leg run higher, you know, Russell 2000 going up here, feeling this at least retesting the gap, you know. Worst case scenario, <laughs> it'll just go up in and fill this gap, you know. I mean, that's just a little bit of move. I think there's more and more move coming. And we'll assess the situation when we get there, right? Let's look at NASDAQ here real quick. Um, again, we've seen these candles before, right? We've seen these candles before. Um, it's, it's not easy calling the top here, man. I cannot call top here. Um, sooner or later, we will we will break uh, we will break down sooner or later we will see much steeper correction we just been seeing a pullback right market goes up and sees a couple days of pullback and then market continues to move higher right and a lot of people thought that 190 was the top and 200 was top 210 was top 220 was top 227 uh, 230, uh, 240, 250, 255, 270. Nobody knows. You don't know. I don't know. No one knows. That's why we trade. We analyze with the data that is at hand without making assumptions and, and, and you know, coming into conjecturing ideas, right? Just... Again, I've said it so many I've said it this so many times in so many videos that most difficult endeavor in the market is calling the top and shorting the market in a bull market in a bullish trend. You will not benefit from it. I guarantee you'll not benefit from it. You might get lucky here and there, but you try it again, you'll get burned. And at the same time, you don't want to chase it either. You didn't get into it. When the when when the setup presented itself to go long, maybe somewhere in this vicinity, when my when some of the levels were, you know, when everybody was scared, obviously, you know, that's kind of how the market works. You have to buy the fear, right? That's taking a risk, and then you have to sell the greed. It's it's oh my, it's so much easier said than done. So much easier said than done. right market punish punishes the chasers and uh, and uh, rewards the risk takers and you might say well, okay after extended like this then how can I try to profit okay I missed out my entry okay well, I was scared. I couldn't get in, and there's it was horrible. Fundamental economical data was pull, pouring out everywhere. It was very very difficult to go long in March lows. So I missed out this move. How can I profit if I can't? You know what I mean? If I, you know what I would say, I. There are other setups out there. Instead of focusing on the Nasdaq, you could have focused on Russell 2000. Because remember, when the Russell when, when Russell 2000 did make a move here to here, this was what, like May? That was 30%, right? Where's May? Where's May? Right here. See, Nasdaq was already at near all-time highs in May. This is May right here, right? So let's say you say, well, because that's exactly what I did. You say, well, I can't, man, I don't know. We just went V-shaped higher. NASDAQ just went V-shaped higher. I didn't get in, you know, you're saying, I didn't get in near the lows. And it's so difficult for me to go long on NASDAQ. In this is a mid-May. Well, the NASDAQ is getting into overbought level, right? And I remember, I think I mentioned this. Instead of chasing high-flying stocks, why not focus on the lagging sector such as small caps or the banks? Because while the, while the Nasdaq was at all-time high, guess what? Russell 2000 was still here. And if you got into it, 
you could have captured some of that move, which is a 30% move, right? 30%. Banks did almost similar to that also. So I remember how I traded it. I mean, I was long on the queues and, you know, large tax stocks. But I was starting to kind of close out my positions at near the all time highs. I still hold some, but I was starting to closing it out and I was not adding on the NASDAQ or the large tax stocks. But guess what I was doing? I was and I've mentioned this back in May, right? I was accumulating because I, I don't chase. So I sought out the weaker sectors. Instead of chasing, because I know that if I chase, I'm going to get burned. Market loves to punish the chasers, but it does rewards the risk takers, right? So I was buying Russell 2000 and the banks. So here, where Nasdaq's up here. Instead of chasing this here, again, we got we got some other, other setups, other indices that's still you know, playable. But you must, you're like, well, I must trade the NASDAQ. I must trade the NASDAQ, right? If you'd have bought the dip here at the highs, you would have you would have seen some green instead of trying to short it. If you'd have bought the dip, let's say in May, June, you would have bought the dip, it's like 14%, right? If you'd have bought the dip on the last pullback right here in late late June, June 29th, at least that was about 10% you could have made instead of trying to call top. I I wouldn't buy the dip here, but if you must, I you know, if you must, I guess I actually think it's it's better in a bullish uptrend, it's better to buy the dip than trying to call the top. Because the problem is also, let's say you did get lucky, and I mean lucky. Let's say you call top, this thing did come down to here, right? I mean, you called it perfectly. That was a day, that was a top. This thing came down to about 221, which if it, if it I don't know if, it's, if it does, what a gift. But anyway, it came down and you're so excited. You're so excited. You're like, you know what? Like I got, like I got this, 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 this mojo, like I can call tops and you're going to try, you're going to continue to try. You're going to try on spider diamond, Russell, whatever you made here, you are gonna lose it all in the next several months. Cause you're going to be keep trying, you know, and that's how people go to casino. They know that the odds are against them, but they keep doing it. Why? They remember that one time that they made money gambling, guessing things. Let's go to Apple here real quick. Obviously, Apple, NASDAQ, they're pretty much synonymous. We, Whatever I said on the NASDAQ applies on Apple. I've closed out another third, one third. And again, these are accumulated March lows. I closed out another one third um, this week. I think I closed out last time one third was about here. So I'm now starting to unload some of my positions, right? Rotating that funds to some other weaker sectors. Um, and maybe if we do see a pullback, maybe I'll, you know, way to maybe accumulate more. If not, I still have some positions that I'm going to continue to write it. Let's go to Netflix here. Um, so Netflix, we did see a pullback. Uh, we saw that um, earnings gap down, right? And, um, It's tough short here. Um, you know, that gap is gonna give them trouble. So if you're gonna short it, if you really wanna short Netflix, like you really wanna short it, I'll place this stop right over here, 539. Because, you know, we might get up and then like that gap there is gonna act as resistance. If you really, I still wouldn't short it. And actually, I'm actually still long because I'm actually been a long-term investor from Netflix from here, those two levels. But I did close out, um, one third here, which I talked about. And then when this thing soared, I did close out one third just this week. And that's how I like to play. I like to get in before the move. I like to write it up. And then when they start to expand, that's when I have to start start unloading my position, wait for the next pullback to add more. 
but I, I didn't short, I didn't add long either, but I think my buy zone is somewhere in this vicinity. I think my buy zone is like 464, 438. I got like three buy zones. Basically what I'm saying is if you go to 465, I'm gonna buy. 430, I'm gonna buy more. 39, I'm gonna buy more, right? Cause I don't, see, I don't know exactly where the bottom is either. But I thought, you know what? I like the price. I like I like Netflix um, in that in that in that price level. Let's go to Amazon. I have no position on Amazon. Um, but that 20 MA right there. I don't know when it's gonna break. You say this time is different. But you've been saying it this entire time, last four or five months. So please don't say it now. I don't see any kind of divergence either. You know, if interesting, I just I just saw this. Amazon. That's an interesting um, kind of price action here. Um, look at that. We we bounced from the um, overbought oversold level. Um, the price is making kind of equal lows there, but that actually is pretty elevated at this point. It's been contracted with that my you know short term moving average, and my mid term moving average just underneath it. Um, looks like there's some energy building here, right? If it breaks out, I think that could be a good long entry, at least in the short term of things. Um, but for long term investing, that's I that's very difficult to go long here for long for as an entry for a more short term for next leg run higher maybe. Um, so, but very very tough short. Um, and another thing is you say, well, okay, I'll keep watching this, and you see there's a twenty MA, so I'm gonna short when this thing breaks below it. Well, you know, then we got that support right here. It's very difficult endeavor. And that resistance connected support just underneath that. We got that midterm moving out. It's, I guess you could try to shoot for that quick drop. I, that's not my, that's not the way I like to do things. Um, you can see that that's Goldman Sachs. Uh, we got some of these uh, moves here. It's been clusters of move. We see a move, consolidation. We see a move, consolidation. We kind of broke out, pulling back a little bit. But I think the overall posture is bullish. Overall posture. I think going into next week, though, um, looks like, you know, there's that consolidation right there. We're coming and retesting this vicinity. It looks like a bull flex, some sort, potentially making move here, right? And we saw a similar thing right here. And then we did see about you know week or so of a bullish run, so I think the posture is bullish. We're staying above all the moving averages now. You guys see the clusters of uh, moving averages all in this vicinity, and they're all rising. So we want to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers. Um, you know, on Goldman Sachs, we ha we're faithfully cultivating higher lows for sure, right? At the higher highs, right? So I think that that's the resistance level there. Right, and if we do break out of this level 220, I think the next move will get us to all time high, at least close to it, at least close to it, because it's been making this kind of moves here. So I think the next leg run higher move would be all time high there. Let's go to gold real quick. Gold has been faithfully marching higher. Um. Let's look at a 65 minute real quick. It looks like we have room to move uh, before we get into the overbought level. Interesting though, it's interesting to recognize that it's been, it has never came down all the way down to the oversold level. It's been oscillating back and forth like this, top of its band. And that happens when trend, you know, when the trend is in a strong uptrend. It doesn't even it doesn't even bother to come down to the over soul level. It comes it comes down, it stops short, and then go right back up. You know what I mean? It's oscillating back and forth on top of its span. Again, when it ha it happens when the trend is strong and trend is strong. It's been we haven't seen like a big move, 
but it's been faithfully moving higher. I, don't, I wouldn't, this is, should not be a level for an entry unless you're very short term. You guys know that I've been long on gold since before the breakout and been adding and I'm holding full on gold as of today. Um, so we'll, I'll continue to do that. I have not closed out any on gold. I have not closed out any on gold. I'm continuing to holding that. Let's go to Bitcoin here real quick. Um, same story on the Bitcoin. So last week we covered the Bitcoin, right? And that was when so that was somewhere up here or the Bitcoin was up here. And we talked about how this gap is going to act as resistance. We're probably going to pull back down. And, you know, we're now we're retesting this gap area, I think. So it's kind of a kind of be the battle of the gaps. But because we are in a downtrend, very likely this is going to come down and fill the gap here at 8, 840. All right, we're going to fill that gap at 840. And at the time, we'll probably see a support in that vicinity, right? When the gap gets filled, and then bulls gonna try to get up and fill that gap, but then we're gonna be met with that resistance, and then yeah, things could get hectic. We'll have to reassess the situation next week. But benefit of the doubt goes to the sellers in both Bitcoin because of this. So, um, well, that's the analysis for this weekend. Uh, hopefully. My thoughts and uh, my analysis been helpful to you in your own analysis, in your own trading. We'll come back tomorrow or Monday morning. I'll tweet things out. You can follow me at 2K Game. And we'll see what happens uh, early part of uh, uh, early next week. And we'll get a little bit of a better idea where the market is going. But I think the energy's build, been, energy has been building. And I think, uh, you know, S&P and... and Majority of the market uh, is is building and is build is preparing for a move and um, getting ready to fill these gaps there. And I think it's most going to be led by the um, we're going to see some outperformance from the uh, lagging sectors such as transport, um, banks, and small caps. And I think they're going to do I think they're going to do well. So I think instead of trying to you know chase the large tech stocks. Uh, Maybe you could look into some of those laggers, you know, but you, you got to be careful. Some of the bank stocks, you know, like like Bank America and, and, and Citigroup and, and Capital and Wells Fargo, they, they are still heavily beaten down. Either you have to be very, very quick unless you're going to be in a long term investor. Um, they make a big move, like fast up move. Right. But they can also correct much, much faster. And that's. That's the that's something that you have to think about because you can see how some of these like large tech stocks, when there's a pullback, they don't pull back as much, right? So there's always pros and cons, um, you know, and different things you gotta think about, worry about, and uh, understand before we get into trade. You guys enjoy your weekend, and I'll talk to you next week. And good luck trading next week.